Oh, we got it in a room full of people. Great. This is fantastic. Uh, I'm loving it here. I haven't been here before, but the gentleman I'm about to introduce, you probably all know a lot better than you know me. I first met Brian in 1982 uh, in at the Naropa Institute in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, it was an event celebrating the 25th anniversary of the publication of On the Road. Uh, I had gone there with Ken Kesey and Ken Babs. Uh, we drove out from Oregon. And Brian hitchhiked to the event from Vancouver, BC. And a lot of what we're going to, you're going to be seeing today is uh, him reading from the book that he wrote about that experience, which is, by the way, a fantastic book. I didn't see Brian again until early this year in May. Or actually, I did see him last year uh, briefly. And he even gave me a book. But I had somewhat followed his exploits and realized that he had become one of the premier beat scholars in the world, uh, one of the great uh, Kerouac scholars. And, and I knew this. I had kind of vaguely seen some of the postings on Facebook uh, that he was showing up in, at events, but I didn't know what he was doing until this event in Indiana in May, and I saw him perform. And I'll tell you, it flat blew me away. Uh, I had no idea what he could do. I, I had just thought of him, he's a scholar, uh, he writes, he reads, uh, but he doesn't just write, he doesn't just read. Uh, he writes like a maniac, and he creates when he reads. He brings what he's reading absolutely to life in the room, and I was stunned. I, I hadn't seen people perform at readings like that, probably since Kesey, who could do this. And so I said, afterwards, I said, wow, Brian, that was incredible, that was fantastic. And uh, so he thanked me and all that, and we got to talking. And I don't recall exactly how the subject came up, but somehow I said, well, I can read Cassidy. And he said, oh, really? And the next morning he showed up with some pages that he'd blown up and uh, color highlighted uh, of a Jack and Neil uh, conversation right out of On the Road. Uh, it was this beautiful dialogue. And uh, he handed it to me the next morning and said, here, read this. <laughs> and so I said, OK. And I did. And I read it uh, like you heard me read it this afternoon, if, earlier if you were there. Uh, what Brian didn't know was that I could essentially become Neil Cassidy. What I didn't at all know, because he never told me, was that he could become Jack Kerouac. <laughs> and uh, as a result, we went up and he said, wow, that was, I read through the thing. He said, wow, he did that cold. That was amazing. And I said, I told you I could do that. He said, do you want to do it on my show? And I said, heck yeah, let's do it. And so I did. And we've been performing ever since. Um, I was so privileged to just see what he could do. And he has taught me so much about what it's like not just to get up and read something, but to get up and actually perform it and bring it to life. And he is one of the most amazing, one of the most skilled people at that in the entire world. I'm absolutely certain. You're here. And so now, well, you guys get to see him do it right here in front of you. It's Brian Hassett. Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Thanks, George. Got you set for that. In the spirit of Jack, a spontaneous love ode just flowed to that thing they do in Lowell. What's cool about LCK is everybody's here for Jack, but all on our own terms. Everybody has a completely different relationship with their family member. You'll hear a hundred different stories by people beaming in front of you, not on the internet, real life radiating energy coming from England or Germany or France or Canada. Yeah. 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 In the house. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> or Indiana, or Oklahoma, or Kansas, or Florida, or Texas. Albuquerque. Oh, good. <laughs> New Mexico is in the house. Because of On the Road, or Maggie Cassidy, or Dr. Sachs. Because of Walt Whitman, or America, or Dr. Thompson. Because of Wanderlust, or Adventure, or a doctoral thesis. This thing is <laughs> There's all the guided first-hand tours you want to ride, and historians and scholars next to you wherever you roam, and playful people off the clock just riffing in the beauty of all the assembled happiness. There's non-stop jamming and goofing and hugging interaction. There's a million places to go, both on maps, made by Dan Bacon, and not. There's Dr. Sachs's woods, the Merrimax banks, the cobblestone streets and brick building labyrinths. And all the local Lowell Jacksters come out from all their local hidings for the weekend when they can let their freak flag fly. <laughs> and everybody's got stories. You can hear Jack lines you've read play back in your head. And you can walk with a crew of your new best friends from one scene to another in places you've only imagined and some you haven't even. And it goes on for days and days. Uh, from the uh, setting sunlit Worthen afternoon of Thursday leading into the epic bar crawl of Jack's joints that climaxes at Cappy's copper kettle of fish with David Amram riffing Pull My Daisy, until homeboy Bill Walsh's final walking tour on Monday through the secret lairs of Pawtucketville, which weaves you back into our Worthen clubhouse, where the worthy who have made it all the way hoist and toast until the jam is done. It's Jack in the now, not in books, not online, in person, in front of you, right now. Live it or love it. Or lose yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Huh. I'm about to lose my world record. This book has the, uh, the, uh, the, the greatest exploration of the connection between the Grateful Dead and the Beats ever in print <coughs> by anybody, anywhere, ever. Sadly, that's true, that's true. Sadly, I'm about to lose that record because I've written a new piece for the, uh, a book coming out next year called Kerouac on Record.